Hey everybody, welcome back to Desktop Inventions. So today I've got a video on the CR30 over here. We're gonna be doing a direct drive extruder upgrade as well as some housekeeping and maintenance items that I've been doing over the past few months on this printer. Which is why you haven't seen me doing as many videos or as much printing on this. I have in the background, but it's been a lot of testing and fixing things. So we'll get into that in the video. So let's dive right in. So this is what I came home to tonight. Some uh, random parts on the print bed here. Turns out that that's the left cooling fan duct, not attached to the print head anymore. And the part looks pretty crappy here. Some massive under extrusion. That was because the spool over here was all bunched up or tangled up and it was not feeding into the extruder. So yeah, not a good night for printing. So it was a little bit difficult to find this exact replacement part online, so I went the easy and effective route and just decided to use some hot glue gun to hold it together. Now let's see if it works. So here we are, back to printing as normal, the fan's working just fine, but now we have a clogged nozzle. We are printing nothing in the middle of nowhere, so that's not what we want. Let's take a look. So I have an idea what might be causing this. So we can see on the CR30 here, we have this PTFE tube and it's a very long tube all the way over to the extruder. And I think that's where we're getting a lot of extra resistance. So here's regular PTFE tubing and here's just some regular brand new filament. So when we put this in this tube and slide it on through, it's pretty low resistance. It's pretty slippery, not a big deal. So no issue here. But now when we take this filament that's gone through the CR30, which has the jaws of death on the extruder, uh, you can hear. This filament's been kind of crushed and has a bunch of grooves in it. So now when we put this through the PTFE tubing, it starts out okay and then gradually gets more and more resistance until I have so much resistance it's bending the filament just try to, trying to push it through here. So way more resistance on this filament after it's gotten crushed by the uh, CR30 extruder there. So I think this is one of the problems to why the nozzle is clogging occasionally. So my idea is to take the extruder here and just direct drive mount it right on the printing head here. So then our length of PTFE tubing will be very, very short. So even if this uh, extruder is crushing that filament a little bit, it's not gonna matter very much because there's just a little bit of PF PTFE tubing. So let's try that. All right, so I've got the extruder taken off of the side there and I'm just looking where could I put it to make it more of a direct drive solution on the printing head. I might put it like this. So the output here feeds right into the input and then I would create a flat plate or 3D printed part that would sandwich in between here where the existing one is and then attach with these two screws. All right, took all the measurements up with the caliper here and got a quick little sketch going. So we're gonna take this and transfer it to CAD and then we're gonna transfer that to a 3D printed bracket. Let's go. All right, there we are, it's mounted here. Let's get it put on the machine. So the original bolts are not long enough. We have to switch for a longer bolt. All right, so mechanically it's all hooked up. Um, electrically, this wire is not gonna work. It's not gonna reach way over there. So I have a handy dandy old uh, extruder cable from something else. So I'm gonna cut this end off and extend this onto there. So that'll run over here. Then we have the little issue of the filament detecting switch. And then figure out a way to feed the filament into here anyway, so it doesn't get kinked over and, and jammed up. So a few little uh, details yet to take care of. All right, let's see how the first print turned out post the uh, direct drive extruder upgrade. So this is just a tiny little lithophane print. 
So see if we can see this on the blue background. No, not really. So we'll go ahead and hold this up to the light. And yeah, we can see the image is pretty clear there. Um, definitely some fine tuning to do yet, but you'll see that in my future lithophane video. So now we're having the similar issue again. Nothing's coming out of the nozzle and the extruder is skipping. So here on the filament, we can see there's so much pressure on it, but due to the blockage, it's uh, kinked up and crinkling inside of the Bowden tube there. So next up, we have this error message about the heating failed. So at this point, I thought it was the heating element going bad, but either way, we've got to tear into the hot end and see what's going on. All right, so here I am digging into the hot end. I got this taken apart. I took the uh, nozzle out of here. <clears throat> now when I took it apart, I think we're gonna find something interesting. See, there's definitely a piece of filament caught up in there. And I think that filament should not be there. Oh, there it goes. Hot, and that is the culprit. Yeah, that's the reason why we keep getting blockages. All right, I found out the issues with why we're having blocks in here. Long story short, in a previous video, I put a piece of PTFE tubing in here as an upgrade. Turns out I cut it too short and was getting a piece of, there's an empty space in there that was getting plugged up with filament and that was causing plugs as we we're printing. So anyways, now that we've gone to direct drive here, I'm going to just do a complete piece of PTFE tubing that goes from the nozzle all the way back to the coupler fitting up here. So we shouldn't have to deal with anything like that. You can see here I've designed a new direct drive mount here that incorporates a piece here that will guide the filament at 180 degrees so we can still use the stock um, filament mounting location. And yes, this is TPU material. It's very, very soft. So normally we cannot print with this when the extruder is mounted over here. But now at direct drive, I managed to use TPU to get this print off here. There we go. So now we have a squishy TPU uh, clank head here. So we can unlock more possibilities to print on the CR30. All right, that's gonna wrap up the video for today. We've got the CR30 printing better and more reliable than it has in the past, but it still has a ways to go in improving the quality to get some better prints out of it. So in the next video, we'll be going through some lithophane prints on the CR30 and see if we can do something really big. So until then, we'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.